So the first one would be uh, open source WSO2 identity server, as is always Drupal by Ivantha. And take it away, Ivantha. Hello, everyone. Uh, I welcome everybody for my session, open source WSO2 identity server SSO with Drupal 8. Uh, so there are a few familiar faces, and uh, hi to everyone. Uh, so uh, this is the first time I am presenting in uh, this Brisbane uh, meetup. So before that, I uh, presented a similar topic in last year Drupal South Hobart event. It was about uh, the SSO with uh, Drupal 8. It, I discussed uh, about how to uh, set up SSO environment using simple SIML and basic uh, Drupal standards. Uh, so before starting uh, today event, uh, today session, I'll give a brief uh, introduction about myself. Uh, I am Ivanta, uh, Ivanta Lekamge. I'm based in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, so I'm working as associate technical lead uh, at WSO2. Uh, so this is my seventh year uh, working as uh, a Drupal developer. And currently, I'm doing some uh, Drupal researchers and Drupal open source implementation with other platforms. So. Uh, I decided to uh, link Drupal 8 with WSO2 identity server and create uh, some SSO environment. So it worked fine. So I decided to present it in uh, some uh, it in uh, some of our Drupal meetups or uh, Drupal conferences and explain uh, and uh, prove that we can uh, do such implementations. We and we can easily set up SSO environments. Uh, so before starting the session, uh, I will uh, give a brief introduction about what is WSO2 identity server. Uh, identity server, uh, basically WSO2 identity server help organizations to build uh, IAM and CIAM solutions to their customers. The IAM means the identity and identity management and CIAM means customer identity management. So this WSO2 identity server providing uh, and they are facilitating to uh, set it up this IAM, CIAM, CIAM environment to uh, your customers. So I will run a small video introduction video then you can uh, get an idea what is wso2 identity server and what are the capabilities how it works how to connect with that and all the details let's uh, watch on this identity and access management typically solve user access to applications based on their roles and attributes with privacy regulations like gdpr and ccpa and the rise of e-commerce platforms businesses are turning towards enhancing customer experiences. Here's where customer IAM comes in, where IAM meets identity data to give customers better digital experiences leading to business growth. Building CIAM solutions or working with CIAM tools has always been the developer's task, focus on storing identity data, managing or federating them. Therefore, customer IAM solutions need to adhere to open standards, be scalable, be API driven, be extensible, help your enterprise become agile. Introducing WSO2 Identity Server. It's an API driven cloud native IAM provider for customer IAM. It provides a highly extensible platform to federate, authenticate, and manage identities across both enterprise and cloud environments. Unlike others, WSO2 Identity Server is fully open source, keeping you free from vendor lock-in. Its enterprise-grade pedigree offers advanced capabilities for customer IAM. Fortune 500 companies also use it for its ability to handle large-scale distributed deployments, and rich connector ecosystem, and most importantly, it helps you save money and time. What's best is it's an integral piece of the open source WSO2 integration agile platform, helping you with your most challenging API and integration projects. You can easily try the WSO2 identity server today. Just download and install. Uh, so uh, I think uh, you enjoyed that uh, video and get some basic idea about what is WSO2 and what they are doing. Uh, so this is uh, uh, this is some award we got about uh, a few time a few times so just like two weeks one month ago so you all know that this forester forester recognized wso2 as a w as a strong performer in identity and access management sector this is a 
uh, very strong award we got uh, about uh, uh, about two three weeks ago. Uh, so these are the product capabilities, but I am not uh, going to discuss about all these product capabilities. Basically, I am uh, discussing about here only about uh, SSOs. Uh, so apart from that, uh, based on your requirement, you can. Uh, we are having some product capabilities, right? Uh, identity, identity, uh, bridging, and especially API security, and also RESTful APIs for integration, like things. So, uh, in moving forward. Uh, so when I discuss about the uh, single sign-on and identity federation, the 90% of WSO2 identity customers are based on uh, this SSO, uh, single sign-on. And also uh, the WSO2 identity support for my, multiple heterogeneous uh, SSO standards like SAML, OIDC, WS federation, CS, like that. So I am discussing here about uh, SAML uh, in, in later. Uh, slides I will explain how SAML works, what is SAML and etc. So apart from that, uh, out of the box integrations, uh, the WS identity server have some uh, integrations with SaaS, SaaS vendors like Salesforce, Google Apps, AWS like as a, like services. Also, uh, moving forward with out of the box integration, so there are uh, there are some integrations, Facebook, Google, Yahoo and uh, Windows Live, Twitter, LinkedIn Live things. Now we are having some integration with Drupal as well. So uh, if you want to download the product, so what you want to do is you want to go to wso2.com and uh, go to w identity and access management. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, in uh, next slides, I'll explain uh, so how to download the product and what are the instra what are the uh, download options we are, uh, what are download options are available. And so, uh, these are the download options currently available. So if you are going to wso2.com website uh, and uh, you can go to identity and access management, then you can see all the download options are uh, options which are available. So if you are familiar with AWS, then you, ha you have the AWS cloud formation. Uh, apart from that, if you are familiar with Kubernetes, Docker, and uh, Ansible puppet like things. There are some uh, download op download options uh, for those platforms as well. So if you are a Mac user, if you are a Windows user, Ubuntu, whatever, we are having uh, inst uh, easy inst uh, installers for that. Apart from that, if you are very tech heavy, then you can download the zip archive uh, and you can set it up uh, the WSO2 ID so in your local machine. Uh, so if you would like to uh, contribute, then a community link is there. You can uh, you can access it and you can access a JIT and you can do the contributions. So moving forward, uh, uh, so I will start this SSO session. Uh, you know that in digitally driven world, the connecting systems are a must for a, an organization. Uh, so if you are working for a, an organization or if you, are hand, if you are operating an organization, you know that you, you have different kind of systems, platforms like HR system, payroll systems, and the company website, the stock management system, customer portals. So sometimes you or your employees want to give uh, access to all these sites and systems. So in that kind of situation, uh, employee what needs to do is employee needs to uh, register these each site and system separately. But what we are uh, recommending recommend here is creating some SSO environment. So registering to each system and site, it's not easy, it's not practical. Sometimes if you are adding more sites and systems, then users to uh, register and log into those systems uh, separately. And I think you know that it's not practical. So in this, if you have SSO environment, then your users will have one single set of user credentials and they can use this single set of uh, user credentials to access all the sites and systems in that SSO environment. That's why SSO is very important to set it up in your organizations. So in the moving forward, so this is what I told, uh, so creating the single sign-on environment, it's very beneficial and uh, users can easily uh, log into systems, users can easily register to systems and the organization and infrastructure team can easily manage the users and user roles in the uh, user roles in the organization. So, uh, what is SSO? So, SSO is single authentication me mechanism that permits users to use one set of user credentials to access multiple 
systems. Uh, so as I explained before, so in a CISO environment, so single user can have single set of user credentials, one set of user credentials, that user can use that single set of user credentials to access all the sites and system in the same environment. So moving forward, I will get some uh, simple example and I will explain uh, what is SSO, how SSO is works. So you know that uh, in, uh, in corporate environment, in the organization, we have some, some sites and systems which is interconnected, uh, which is interconnected in the SSO environment. So let's say some uh, employees, some user in the environment want to access some stock management system in their environment. Then what, uh, uh, what user employee needs to do is, employee needs to connect to connect to this SSO environment and need to get, get authenticated from there. Then user can easily access the stock management system. So after that user needs to, let's say user needs to access the HR website, then user doesn't want to log into that, uh, log into uh, HR system again, then user has already uh, logged into SSO environment, user has already connected to the SSO environment, then user can easily access the HR system as well. Likewise, user can access all the sites and uh, systems in the environment, the SSO environment once, log, once user log into one system. So the, base, the best known example is uh, Google. Google having some services like YouTube, uh, Gmail, and uh, Google Drive, Google Calendar. So there are different kind of uh, services. So once you log into one service, then you don't want to access many, uh, uh, you don't want to uh, log into other services in the environment. So basically, when, once you log into uh, Gmail, then you can easily access uh, YouTube and you can uh, you can create calendar, calendar invites and you can uh, upload your documents to Google Drive. So this is a good example for uh, simple SSO environment. So in this example, you can see there are three entities. Uh, there are three websites are interconnected in a single sign-on environment. So user is there. So if you if the user want to access one of this uh, one of this website, user need to connect to SSO uh, environment and user need to get authenticated from there. Then user can easily access all the sites and systems in this environment. So uh, you may think why, why you need this SSO. So there are some benefits from user perspective and as well as in uh, the organization perspective. So if you are talking about the uh, user perspective, so uh, the user can have, uh, say you can, user can use same user credentials to access multiple sites and the systems in the environment. Also, as I explained, the automatic login uh, it's just like once you log into one system, one site, it will automatically log into other sites and systems in the in the environment. So likewise, in the SLO single logout system, once you logged out from one system, it will automatically logged out from all the sites and the systems in the same environment. This is very beneficial from the user perspective. User doesn't want to keep uh, uh, too many user credentials with the with them, so user can easily access one system and user can easily log into one system and access all the systems. Likewise, user can easily log out from the all the systems in the single uh, sign-on environment. In the organization wise, so basically the cost, it's very cost effective. So uh, it's basically just like a centralized systems, so all the users and user roles are stored in this centralized system, the security wise, the organization want to uh, uh, secure this centralized system only. So infrastructure cost is very low. And likewise, the infrastructure team is, can easily manage the users and the user roles. Let's say some user in the organization uh, has changed the uh, team as a, let's say some user has worked for a uh, sales team and now user is working for a HR team, then user, then, then uh, that user needs to get the access to HR portal infrastructure team where it can easily provide the, uh, easily, easily give the permission to that user uh, via this centralized system. It's very beneficial in the organization wise. Uh, also the operational cost, as I explained, uh, so cost is very low. The 
so use uh, the organization doesn't uh, want to uh, maintain many sites and systems uh, ma maintains mean to secure many sites and systems and also in the migration wise and also configurations wise it's very easy let's say you want to uh, migrate uh, from one environment to another environment the users and the user all sign the separate and uh, separate entity so it's you you can in in your case you can easily migrate your system and site because the users and user all sign the different environment and also let's say you want to connect a uh, new system uh, like uh, let's say uh, stock management system you want to connect it uh, single sign on environment then what you want to do is you want to you want just do the single sign uh, single uh, sign on configurations only then users and user roles are already configured then easily the users employees in the organization can use the newly connected system also the sso standards uh, there are a few sso standards uh, which have connected with the WSO2 identity server, so SAML 2.0, WSO2 Federation, WS Federation, and OIDC. So I am uh, discussing only here about uh, SAML 2.0. So some of may you uh, familiar about what is SAML and how SAML works, but I will explain uh, so definition of SAML and how it works. So SAML is a XML-based markup language which is used for exchange in authentication and authorization uh, information between the identity provider and the service provider. So there are new terms uh, I have mentioned here. Those are SAML and also identity provider, also service provider. So I, I will take a small example and I will explain uh, how SAML works and what is identity provider and what is service provider. So this is uh, this is the definition of identity provider and also service provider. Uh, in this example, I will explain uh, the, them in more detail. So there are three entities are uh, interconnected here. The user is there. Let's say the user is the employee of the organization and identity provider and also service provider. So identity provider uh, will uh, maintain uh, will contains of all the users user roles and the authentication system of the organization and service provider uh, will consist of all the services of the organization let's say now user want to access uh, some system in the organization then user want to uh, wants to send us some saml request to ID, idp via service provider so once idp get a request from uh, service provider then idp is checking whether this request is coming uh, this request is getting via non-source or non-service provider if a request is getting via non-source non-service provider then what idp is doing idp uh, authenticate that request sometimes idp need to connect it to uh, uh, internal database or ldap then whatever data source then getting uh, then the then authentication use authentication thing happen after that uh, IDP create a SAML response and send in the, send in back that SAML response to service provider. So what service provider doing? Uh, what service provider is doing? Service provider consume that SAML response and creating relevant uh, creating relevant user sessions to access the sites and uh, systems in the environment. So there are seven main steps involved in this SAML. Uh, request and re response process so first in the first request uh, user need to log into application then user is sending a uh, saml request uh, basically service provider is sending in that saml request to identity provider then it, it, it has a http request then identity provider getting then getting that http request and checking whether that identity uh, that HTTP request, SAML request, get in from a non-source. If it is from a non-source, then authentication process is happening and creating a, a SAML response and IDP sending back that idea SAML response to service provider. That's what uh, I mentioned in the uh, point five. In point six, service provider uh, decode or consume that uh, SAML response and create relevant. Uh, uh, sessions drupal sessions uh, and 
authenticate and allow users to access the resource uh, or allow users to access the uh, sites and the systems in the environment there are seven steps are in all here so now what i am going to do is i am going to do some small practical uh, practical session so before that i will explain what are the requirements we need a simple saml php library you can download this simple saml php library uh, and also you need to have some two drupal instances and also simple saml php auth drupal module so you can download this as well so uh, i explain so you can download wso2 identity server from here so after downloading the wso2 identity server you can uh, start wso2 identity server so i have already start you can uh, uh, you can uh, post it uh, in locally and you can go to bin folder first of all you need to go to uh, wso2 identity is 590 then you can see the bin folder then there is a uh, wso2 uh, sh file sh server file so what you need to do is you need to restart it so it will take some uh, not some just like small time just like uh, 40 seconds to one minute so i have already uh, hope, uh, I, I already started uh, my server this is my server this is the server so you can use uh, these user credentials the username admin and the password and password also admin that's just this so after that i i have written a article so how to set it up uh, wso2 is uh, sso environment for drupal 8 using wso2 identity server so i have explained step by step in here easily uh so what you need to do is you need to follow up uh, uh, this article step by step it's in my medium uh, medium.com at ivanta then you can see all the articles which i uh, which is written by me uh, so let's go step by step first of all you need to log into uh, wso2 identity server and we have already logged in it then you need to go to uh, service provider step so service provider tab and you need to create add a new service provider let's say you need to add w you need to add some service provider and you can register then what you want to do is uh, you if you want to add some uh, description you can add a description and if you want to make it as a SaaS application make it as a uh, you you want to make it as a SaaS application click on that then go to claim configurations and you need to add a claim url for that uh, yeah you need to add the claim uh, claim your claim url in there then for that uh, uh, you need to add two claim urls this claim url information is here one is for the mail the other one is for the uh, first name after that you can create a uh, create simple saml php service uh, you want to create a uh, simple saml php service provider so for that you need to have uh, some drupal 8 identity provider and also drupal 8 uh, service provider uh, for that i have already set up uh, two drupal instances here uh, so what you need to do is you want to go to uh, service provider section this is my service provider and you want to uh, go to vendor section and you want to go to simple uh, saml uh, you want to uh, yeah, post that simple saml php library in here so after that uh, you want to create a theme link for that you can go to 
You can go to here and you can go to vendor uh, and you can you can see the simple SAML PHU library in there. For, for, after, for creating symlink, uh, you can run this command. You need to run this command. You have to go back to steps and you want to create a, uh, this command in here. After creating uh, uh, this, after running this command, you can see a, you can see a simply you can see a folder in here simple SAML with the, all of the information what we want then what you want to do is we have some HD access uh, few rules you want to copy this HD uh, HD access rules then you want to go to HD access file and you want to paste to HD access in, uh, rules here then you want to Change, uh, you want to do some configuration changes in the IDP site. So what you want to do is, uh, you want to go to config and config.php vendor, simple summer PHP, config, then config.php. So there are a few steps, few uh, things to uh, change especially the store type you want to change because uh, I am connecting this uh, this SSO environment with the database. If you want to connect it, uh, connect it to a uh, LDAP, you can do the LDAP configurations here. And if you want to connect it to some MongoDB or any other data source, you can do that configuration in here. So store type is SQL, and I can uh, I am uh, setting up host as localhost and also my db name also username and password of my local database so after that if you want to change the auth admin password so you can change the auth admin password also mm, hold on. so auth admin password so i have changed it as well so after setting up everything, so you want to uh, give some path to uh, especially uh, so simple, uh, not a simple, uh, you want to give the path to identity provider for that at this uh, line to end of the configuration file. So now you have set up uh, the ID, IDP, uh, so, sorry, the uh, service service provider. And after that, you know to go to auth resources PHP file. Config auth resources PHP file. And you want to add this, right? You want to comment this, and you want to add the new configuration information. This is mainly for. Uh, this is mainly for connecting your. Uh, local host with the wso2 identity server after setting up this you want to exchange uh, the meta information between your local drupal instance and the, your uh, your your wso2 identity identity server uh, sorry yeah so you want to share uh, your idp information your Drupal 8 IDP information with the WSO2 IDP server and also WSO2 IDP server uh, meta information with the 
Drupal 8 instance. For that, I have already provided this information in here. What you want to do is copy IDP metadata to meta metadata SAML 20 IDP remote PHP files of the service provider. So what you want to go do is go to metadata section, then meta SAML 20 IDP remote.php and copy file in there. This is the metadata of your WSO2 identity server. And also you want to get uh, your local Drupal instance metadata to WSO2 uh, to the identity provider. For that, what you want to do is access your local file and simple summon. And confirm. Yeah, no, sorry, it's there. So, yeah, this is a file. So, what do you want to get is you want to take uh, this code and you want to add it to your identity provider. Then, after setting up uh, both after exchanging this meta information now what you want to do is you want to uh, you you want to set up simple summon php or module for that what you want to do is go to admin uh, php simple summon auth section on your local and you want to do some configurations to your local uh, simple SAML PHP auth module. For that, I have uh, explained what we need to change. Basically, uh, you want to add uh, the default uh, source name. It has a default SP, and also, uh, so I, you you may see that in some SSO environment, uh, sometimes you want to click uh, uh, some external uh, ex external button uh, button to uh, redirect to. Uh, SSO environment for that there is a, there should be a name for that button so I have used the name of the button as federated login so you can uh, you can use whatever you want and after that uh, you want to change the user infant syncing uh, user infant syncing section so you want to use the mail and also f name because we have used mail and f name here as claim URLs mail and if name as claim urls and uh, synchronize uh, username on every login you want to make it as tick tick but it's not a mandatory and uh, yeah then you need to save it and the local authentication uh, so sometimes uh, in this sometimes we are uh, uh, we are not using the super admin uh, for the sso uh, login for in that kind of situation you can uh, you cannot allow super admin, so you can uh, add the super admin or the users you want to disallow from the SSO, you, uh, SSO environment. So I have added the super admin. If you have more use IDs, you can add more use IDs by comma separating in here. So after everything, so now, now you have set up SSO environment. And you can see, you can see a screen just similar to this. When you go to, log out, and once you click on this, you can see the federated login. Once you click on the federated login, you will automatically redirect to 
WSO2 identity server and you will be get authenticated from there. So basically, I think uh, I got just like 30 minutes time. I, I know that I can uh, explain every step in this uh, document and it's very long and there is some uh, difficult configurations. That's why uh, I, uh, that's why I uh, written this article, then you can easily use this article later and uh, you can uh, set up uh, you can you can set up your sso environment and also there are some youtube uh, youtube uh, video you can go for that youtube video as well uh, so going forward these are the resources which you need for setting up wso2 sso environment uh, basically you know you want to uh, you want to download a uh, simple simple php library and also simple simple php auth uh, drupal module and you can download the identity server using this identity and access management uh, the, the the page by accessing that page and the finally the my medium article i have explained each and every uh, each and every step in there uh, i think you can take just like 2 3 hours and you can set up uh, your sso environment in very peacefully so finally uh, my medium blog, uh, medium.com at Ivanta. If you want to get uh, some uh, Drupal update or SEO update or whatever, you can sub uh, you can uh, subscribe to my medium uh, medium blog. And also, if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, send me a LinkedIn via LinkedIn, or you can uh, make me via Twitter. So if you have any questions which related to WSO2 identity server, what you want to do is you want to uh, connect with WSO2. Uh, this is uh, WSO2 is a open source. Uh, this WSO2 identity server is an open source product, so you can download and uh, you can use it. If you have any questions, you can connect. A, you can uh, fill a contact us form, or else uh, please uh, send me an email, Ivanta at WSO2.com. Uh, I'll help you on how to set up SSO environment. So thanks for connecting with me. So this is, uh, this is uh, I think, ho hope you are happy with this. Sorry, I think uh, some interruption happened in between my uh, my setup. Uh, so I think that's that, uh, because of that reason, I can show you what's the, uh, what's the output, how output it works. Uh, so if you have any questions, yes, just uh, connect, uh, just ask me now.